Coming up, resisting temptation in the sport of Mondio Ring. This ghost at Turacatala is hardwired to herd. And Ruby the Rottweiler is starting a new fan. Turbo, a five-year-old Belgian Malinois, is practicing his jumps for his upcoming Mondio Ring trial in Texas. This European dog sport is just catching on in North America. Francis Metcalf is his owner and trainer. Mondio Ring is a challenging variation on police dog sports. It tests a dog's protection response, jumping skills, and obedience around distractions. I believe that Mondio Ring is the most difficult ring sport for dogs. In normal agility, uh, you have small jumps and it tests the dog's ability to weave through the poles and, and compete under time. Mondio Ring uh, is meant to be extreme jumps. The Belgian Malinois was originally a herding breed. Today, they're a favorite with the military and the police. The Belgian Malinois outperforms uh, virtually every other breed in Mondio Ring Sport. Um, the reason is that the, the breed itself was uh, created specifically for this type of work. Um, they're, they're not, uh, they don't make a great pet. They're uh, strictly a working dog. Um, they have got tons and tons of energy and it needs to be satisfied by doing some sort of fun sport like Mondio Ring. Turbo and Francis have traveled throughout North America, racking up titles in other police dog sports. But they've only competed at level one in Mondio Ring. In Texas, Turbo will compete at level two for the first time. Turbo couché, rest. Because Mondio Ring is a European sport, the commands are given in French. Mondio Ring tests the dog's obedience in extreme situations. Francis's friends act as decoys. Turbo must ignore the distractions and stay in place. Excellent, guys. Good work. I don't think he, he's not going to break during the trial. Right, he's not yeah, moving. Good. good work. Good boy. Some of the exercises in Mania Ring Sport, like the refusal of thrown food, are very difficult. But the basic premise of the exercise is to see whether your dog can resist the temptation of a morsel of, you know, uh, very delicious food thrown at his paws and uh, resist as if it was a poison piece of food while you're out of the picture. Good boy. What a good boy. Mondial Ring's signature exercise is defense of the handler. At level two, the decoys don't let on they're about to attack. The dog can only bite when the decoy aggresses the handler, actually hits him with two hands. That's the only time the dog can bite. There's no command. The dog must bite on his own. Turbo! Good, that was great. Excellent work. Mondio Ring is a sport, okay? Uh, this is a sport, it's like a martial arts for dogs. The dog is out there, the dog is sparring with the decoy. Uh, it's not uh, a real uh, aggression. It, the dog's out there having fun with the decoy and, and having a good time. It's sort of like how a football player would have a good time on the field. They're being rough, it, it seems a little violent sometimes, but actually the dog is out there having a blast. Couché, debout, couché, 
Asi. Debu. Good boy. Oh, yeah. Mondial ring trials are fun because they always have a theme. The theme is reflected in the objects on the field and the strange items the dogs will have to retrieve. For the Texas event, the theme is safari. Me and Turbo are best friends. I mean, we just go everywhere together. We've, we've been back and forth across the country. He comes to work with me every day. He sleeps in the bed at night. We're super close. We're like brothers. When it's time to play, Turbo loves his ball, but sometimes he gets overexcited. Unfortunately, uh, Turbo loves the tennis ball so much that, that when he goes to chase it, he doesn't uh, think about what he's doing. It's sort of a, a kind of reckless abandon. And this was the cause of, of his injury when he was one. I tossed the ball for him, and he just landed wrong and twisted his ankle. And next thing you know, he was limping for a year. Uh, it, was, it was a really terrible, terrible uh, event. I'm very concerned about Turbo's ankle. It's been a chronic injury since he was one. If Turbo's ankle flares up, it could be a problem for the trial. The trial is about to begin. A judge has been flown in from Spain. The spectators include a few dogs. Turbo's trial will have three parts, obedience, jumps, and protection. He'll lose points for mistakes and slow responses. Turbo has to retrieve this doll within 15 seconds. Done. At this confusing station, Turbo must find and retrieve the wooden block with Francis's scent on it. Done. The send out. Turbo runs away from Francis at breakneck speed, only returning when Francis calls him back. Next, the hurdle. and the long jump. Finally, the protection exercise. The decoy tries to fool Turbo. It works. Turbo doesn't attack when he should. The judge deducts points, but gives him another chance. interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. The Mondial Ring trial is over. Uh, second time. The judges tally the scores. Every second is minus two points. Despite a few mistakes, Turbo gets a respectable score. And the judges award Turbo and Francis their level two Mondial Ring certification. Muchas gracias, senor. Muchas gracias, senor. <laughs> I, I'm a perfectionist, so I would like to see us do a little bit better. But this was my first time in Mondio 2, so I'm pleased with what we did. I'm really proud of Turbo. Thanks. Josep Blanguillomes is a Catalan shepherd who uses Ghost Datura Catala, or Catalan sheepdogs, to herd his sheep. Two year old Kilu is the youngest of his three working dogs. He's also the one Josep is closest to. 
nació el día de San José. He was born on St. Joseph's Day in 2000. He was the best gift I could have gotten. He's a year and eight months old. I decided to switch to Catalan Sheepdogs because there are national dogs. The region of Catalonia lies in the northeast corner of Spain. For 40 years under the Franco dictatorship, the Catalan language was forbidden and Catalan culture was repressed. The region regained its autonomy after Franco's death and its culture flourished. Gosta Turas have herded sheep in the Catalonian Pyrenees for generations, but during the Franco years, they nearly became extinct. Every morning, Kilu and the others take 160 sheep up the mountains to graze. Kilu learned the ropes by watching the older dogs. Giuseppe got his first Gosta Tora 15 years ago. He depends on his dogs for his everyday work. For fun, he likes to enter them in competitions. At competitions, when there are only a few sheep to herd, it can be easier with other breeds. Catalan sheepdogs prefer to have a flock of over 200 sheep. They're hard workers and are very strong, so when the dog sees a small flock, he doesn't really like it. But competitions are only one or two days a year, whereas the work of leading the sheep up to the fields is every single day. So it's fine with me. Kilu uses his strength and agility to control the sheep on uneven ground. Gos datura means dog who stops. They literally stop the sheep. For instance, when the sheep go too fast, the dogs go up front and stop and control them. The dog's job is to lead the sheep and keep them on the path. They can't go wandering into fields that belong to the neighbors. The shepherd leads the way, and the dogs have to control the sheep so that they follow the shepherd along the path. Each dog has a specific job to do. Palut, the oldest and most independent, stays at the rear to make sure no sheep lag behind. Palm and Kilu stay on either side of the flock to make sure the sheep don't stray from the path. Catalan sheepdogs are hardwired to herd and they're built for the mountains. Their short legs give them a lower center of gravity for more stability on the steep paths. Catalan sheepdogs are dogs who take lots of initiative. When you've already been to a specific field, they know where the sheep can go and where they can't. They use their own initiative, so often it isn't necessary to give them commands. Kilu and the others have to make sure the sheep stay away from fields that have been recently sown. Giuseppe sends the dogs to their posts. They need very few commands. The fact that these dogs have such initiative is actually an advantage. Sometimes I go off and hunt for mushrooms and the dogs stay with the sheep. In six months, Kilu will enter his first herding competition. His father, Palm, has won five of them. Kilu only recently learned to control the flock solo. Giuseppe asks him to gather the flock and drive them to one end of the field. The important thing is to be a very good friend to the dog, to be affectionate with him. He has to obey you, but if the dog is your friend, he'll obey you. Competitions are nothing more than obedience. I mean that if the dog obeys, then it's easy. Giuseppe works on Kilu's corralling skills. He has to round the sheep up into a circle and keep them still. 
Ves a la dreta. Ves a la dreta. A la dreta. En darrere, en darrere, en darrere, en darrere. He hopes that Kila will be the next herding champion in the family. Quiet. Quiet. Chao, Kilo. Chao, quiet. Chao. Muy bien. Festejava la criada, tan i tan la festejat, que ha vingut que l'ha enganyada. Espero poder seguir, aunque no és fàcil. I hope I can continue being a shepherd, even though it's not easy. Well, it's not easy, and it becomes more and more difficult due to decreasing prices, because it's not profitable. But, well, I believe it is important to try to continue, because the mountains, without shepherds, I believe they would really lose their charm. Before, shepherds used to sing. They used to sing and play instruments like accordion and harmonica. Now, this has been lost, but a few shepherds still do it, like my friend here. So I guess in the end I will remain a shepherd since this is what I most prefer to do. And as for Kilu, well, I think it's what he likes best too, and so I think both of us will continue. When dogs are put in a harness, instinctively most of them will pull. Put on the harness. That fact inspired Daphne Lewis to give her dog Ruby a new challenge. Hurry. Good boy. Go on. Go on, Ruby. Good it's called scootering. And Daphne and Ruby side, have been side. at it for four years. Good dog, good dog. Good dog. Hurry, Ruby. Hurry. I had this dog. He was very strong. He was very young. He was very energetic. I wanted to harness his brain and his brawn. I didn't want to waste it. Go, go, go. And as a kid, I'd had a newspaper route, and I had a dog who pulled the cart and delivered newspapers. So I thought of him as being a pulling dog when I got him. And so I tried roller blades, and the roller blades were really fun, except you, it's hard to stop and you can't go anywhere where there are bumps. So then I thought, well, what could I use? So I switched to scooters, which have brakes and big wheels. It makes it more fun, because he's a slow dog. Now that he's older, he's a slow dog. And going uphill, even if he's going slowly, I have to run, and his slow trot is still a good run for me. So the hills just make it a whole lot more fun because I get exercise too. Because they're often used as guard dogs, people tend to assume Rottweilers are vicious and mean-tempered. They're wrong. Well, their reputation, of course, is as killer dogs, but, but they're not. I think the Rottweiler who is a killer dog is a Rottweiler brought up by somebody who wants him to be that way. The way he is now, placid and um, laid back, is the way he was as a puppy. And the breeder said she bred for gentleness and... Uh, he was always quiet and well-behaved. Like a husky dog, when you get ready to hook them up, they're excited and they're jumping up and down and everything. He's just placid. But he goes and doesn't stop. So I think he likes it. And I know it's good for him. Ruby is Daphne's favorite way of getting around Seattle. I live by myself and Ruby's my friend. And he's a convenient friend because he'll go with me all the time, everywhere. He goes with me to work. He goes with me everywhere. One of the things that is really fun for me about the scootering is after work, especially in the summertime, I can just hook, hook him up to a scooter and go to a park and we can go for half an hour or an hour after work and just go through the woods and go up and down the trails and go along the water. Um, it's just really relaxing. So I'm coming up to a corner and, and Ruby is going to stand still and wait and not tangle, go, 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 and not tangle the line. Ruby, wait. Daphne had to fine-tune Ruby's obedience training. 
At a crossing, he stands at an angle so that he can see both the traffic and Daphne. The command for Ruby is wait. I, a lot of people use whoa, but I don't like whoa because it sounds like no and it sounds like go, and I use go a lot, and I sometimes use no. Um, I like wait because he already knows that command um, and because it's crisp. Let's go. Ruby G. Ruby Ha. Daphne began by teaching Ruby mushing commands while he was on a leash. G means turn right. Ha means go left. Keep up. G. Good dog. Good she dog, also Ruby. used what's Thank called you. a drag to train him to pull steadily. This is a very lightweight drag, but as they get more experience, they use a heavier and heavier drag. Ruby is a very steady scooter go. and uh, reliable, Ruby. but I have a very hard time getting him to go faster than six miles an hour. Ruby inspired Daphne to write a how-to book on scootering. There was something about it. I was just compelled to write it. She included her favorite Ruby stories. We were scootering uh, down by the grain elevator at night with four dogs. And it was after dark, and a train came up beside us. And Ruby started racing the train. And it was just awesome. We went through the night chasing this train side by side. That was the best for scooter ride I've ever had. Scooter racing is popular in Australia and New Zealand. It's thanks to Ruby and Daphne that scootering is catching on in Seattle. Daphne organizes fun runs. Saving extra room for people. They have fun, I have fun, and, and what more is there than, than going out and having fun with your dog? I think it's fun for me and it's also fun for the dogs. Um, I think you'll see today that they get very excited when they get to go out. Go! Go, Ruby, go! <laughs> it doesn't look like Ruby's the fastest dog on the block. Sometimes novices forget the mushing commands. Skedaddle! Okay. Yes, this is my first time. It's great, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> it truly is. It's just fun having a dog who's so reliable and obedient and does it such a good job.